I recently got a new sketchbook and I was so excited to start drawing. But when I finally got a break, sat down with my cup of peppermint tea and opened my sketchbook, I just had no idea what to even draw in the first place. So I did some brainstorming and I figured out the best way to approach my subject matter. Of course, you can do whatever you want in your sketchbook. That's kind of the point. It's a place to play, experiment, test out new art supplies, whatever you want to do. But especially as a beginner, if you're staring at that blank page, it can just feel a little intimidating, especially if you don't have a plan for how to attack the page and some subject matter to get started on. That's why I like to create buckets of subject matter for how I want to fill out my sketchbook. And we'll jump into that in just a second. But on the very first page, I really like to write my intention down for the sketchbook so that by the time I'm finished with it, I can really see the progress that I've made. So your intention could be anything like improving your drawing skills, drawing from life, testing out a new medium, developing your art style, that's one of my favorites, practicing portraits, anything like that. Then from there, I like to create a list of subject matters that I want to work on. That way I know when I open my sketchbook, I have a plan of what to draw. So in this video, I'm gonna go over 10 ideas for what to draw in your sketchbook. You might hate some of them, you might love some of them. It's okay to narrow down, you don't have to do all 10, but I'm gonna give you a list of 10 and hopefully some will resonate with you. Let's jump in. Subject matter number one is your own backyard. You can draw any landscape and I love drawing from life, but why not just go outside and make it easy on yourself and just draw what you see when you walk out the door. It could be your neighborhood, it could be your backyard, if you live in an apartment, it could be your apartment building or whatever is behind there. But yeah, take a chair, go sit outside, and especially if you're a beginner, just take a graphite pencil. It's easy to erase, you can plan out your proportions and you can go from there. I recommend working with a kneaded eraser and just having fun. If you really want to draw a landscape in your backyard isn't very inspiring, you can always go to a local park or any other landscape in your area that feels inspiring to you and just take an outdoor chair. Subject matter number two is still life. Still life is a subject that artists have been drawing for centuries, so why not just go to your fridge, pull out some fruit or vegetables or whatever you have in there. It doesn't have to be food. It could be flowers or other inanimate objects. It could be your phone, a coffee cup, a vase, whatever it is. Arrange the composition in a beautiful way, in a way that you have some taller objects, some shorter objects, some objects that are in front and behind each other, and yeah, just go to town. In this example, I'm using oil pastels, but if you are a beginner, feel free to sketch out your drawing first with graphite pencil and go from there. This is a good opportunity to use a new medium and you know, if you don't draw the perfect likeness of an apple unlike a face, no one's gonna really know as long as you get the main idea of the apple down, then you know, it's, it's an easy thing to draw and it's not a lot of pressure to mess it up. Subject matter number three is a relaxing swatching set. So if you have a range of paints or colors that you want to try out or if you simply have just never swatched your paints, then I really recommend gritting off your paper in your sketchbook and putting on some music and have a relaxing swatching session. There's no pressure to draw anything here. All you're doing is really playing with the color. And I like to group all my light colors together, so all my blues together, my greens, my yellows, and so on. And I also like to go from a dark to light value on my color swatching, but you can do it however you want. Subject matter number four is to study the masters. So I use the term masters loosely, but in art history, there are some kind of art giants like Picasso, Andy Warhol, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Frida Kahlo, Georgia O'Keeffe, plenty of artists out there for you to study. So pick your favorites, whoever's really inspiring you, who, if you wanna to go to a museum and see their exhibit, who gets you the most excited, and do an art study of them. You always wanna, of course, credit the artist when you are doing a study, but especially in your sketchbook, this is a place for you to learn and to grow, and seeing what some of your most inspiring masters, <laughs> master artists did, 
is a really great way to learn. You can figure out how they arrange their composition, what kind of color values they used, what color palette they used, what their subject matter was, you know, that you can really study how they did things and improve your own art style by learning from the greats. Number five is to test out new art supplies. So when you get some new art supplies in, you don't wanna use your best paper. So your sketchbook really is the best place to work it out. It doesn't matter if you mess it up, it doesn't matter at all. This is your sketchbook. It's the place to play, to experiment, to have fun. So test out new art supplies here. Just scribble, make puddles, mess it up, it's okay. Make a mess. That's what you're supposed to do in your sketchbook. So I love to test out new art supplies here, kind of see what can layer, on top of each other, what colors look good together, how my marks look, what kind of texture I can get from certain art supplies. So yeah, definitely your sketchbook is the best place to do this. Number six is travel and draw. So if you are going on a trip or a vacation, you definitely wanna take your sketchbook. I know it can be a little bit heavy, but I recommend getting a smaller sketchbook for your travels. But yes, yes, yes to this. Your sketchbook is the ideal place to record memories. Of course, you're gonna have a million photos and you can always come back to those and reference a photograph, even when you're working in your sketchbook or for a final painting or drawing, that's totally fine. But to be able to sketch from life when you're on a special trip just really creates this memory and makes you pay attention to the details of where you are and really pulls you into the present moment. Unlike taking a quick photograph where you're snap, 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 just taking a million pictures and you aren't really feeling present. So when you take the time to slow down, open your sketchbook, look around you, study the scene, this really pulls you into the moment and creates a very special memory that you just really can't get from taking photographs. Number seven is urban sketching. So if you don't have a special trip planned, do not worry, my friend. You can simply go to a mall like I did and sit in the food court and draw. Why not? Hey guys, so I am in the mall. I find this to be one of the best places for urban sketching. And I'm here on a day where it's not too crowded, um, but I'm coming to the food court so I have a great place to sit down where you can just people watch and do some urban sketching. I'm testing out um, my new moleskin sketchbook. So I'm really excited to see how that's gonna play out and yeah, see what the best sketchbook is for urban sketching. This is the perfect place to people watch and you can really start to practice your skills. Even if you're a beginner, there's no pressure. It's just the mall, whatever, you know? But sitting in a food court, you're gonna have a lot of different dynamics. There's gonna be a lot of things that you can choose from to focus on. And I mean, it's just the best place to people watch. So if you're gonna find some characters to draw, you're sure to find them here. And your subject matter is going to be moving around a bit, especially if you are drawing people, but there may be some people sitting at a table for a lot longer. So, you know, you could draw people sitting and especially as a beginner, if you're drawing from life and want to start drawing subjects that move like animals or people or cars or boats, then this is a great place to practice when people are kind of sitting down for a while or waiting in a line for a few minutes so you can you know, loosely sketch out the positioning. I like to draw in pen and ink when I'm urban sketching, but of course, if you feel more comfortable with graphite and feel like you need to erase, feel free to do that. But I like pen and ink because you get your marks down quickly and when you're urban sketching, you just have to work fast. So there's no time for worrying about if you got the correct proportions, you're just trying to get the impression down. So that's what I like about using pen and ink for urban sketching. Number eight is start an art challenge. There's so many challenges out there. I've recently started doing the 100 heads challenge and it's definitely taking me longer than 10 days, so don't judge. But <laughs> there are so many art challenges out there. You could do a million different versions of Inktober now. You can do you can pick any subject matter and do a hundred of them. I'm doing a hundred heads, but you could do a hundred hands, a hundred eyes, a hundred landscapes, whatever you choose to do. An art challenge is just a really great way to improve your skills and get better at drawing a particular subject that you are intending to get better at. Number nine is to draw a pattern. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lauren Leslie. I'm a surface pattern and textile designer, so patterns are my main thing. But yeah, I mean, I love to do hand-painted motifs in my sketchbook, especially for my licensed fabrics. Your sketchbook is a great place to draw or paint motifs. You can always scan them in and then 
arrange them in a pattern in Photoshop if you prefer to work that way, or you can just create the pattern straight on your page in your sketchbook and kind of play with those handmade elements. And subject matter number 10 is to draw a self-portrait. When I was in art school, I spent a whole semester studying abroad in Italy, and I decided to work on self-portraits for the entire semester. We were supposed to pick some kind of theme or topic or subject matter to focus on for the whole semester, and that was just kind of it. We didn't really get a lot of assignments or direction. That was our assignment, was just to, I think it was painting two or painting three. So in painting one, they give you more assignments, but in this, um, I just wanted to kind of reflect on who I was and being pulled out of my own country was a really great way to do that. I was able to kind of deconstruct what about me was really me, what about me was my culture or my country and being placed in a different culture was a just fantastic way to do that type of self-reflection. It doesn't mean that you're narcissistic. It doesn't mean that, I mean, whatever. If people judge you for that, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Screw them, right? But no, self-portraits are a great way to do some self-reflection. I think it's kind of therapeutic, and honestly, it's just easier to use yourself, and especially when you don't have models or another subject matter that you wanna photograph. Of course, now with the internet, you know, you can always find reference photos, but if you're having a hard time finding a reference photo, just put yourself in the positioning that you want to draw and, you know, just photograph yourself and then work from that. So that's what I ended up doing for the semester and I'll show you some of my old paintings here, I guess. <laughs> but doing a self-portrait in your sketchbook is a fantastic place to start. You can either look in a mirror or take photographs of yourself and work from a photograph. In high school, we were taught how to grid off our paper and I really like to use this app on my phone. It's called Grid Number and you can put as many or as little lines on your photograph as you want and then you can also grid off your paper the same way so that way you know like if you're like this like where the eye lines up on the face <laughs> and like where you know where things are lining up on your paper do to do, do um <laughs> But yeah, it's just, a, especially if you are a beginner, then using something like a grid app and gridding off your paper in your sketchbook is a really great place to start, especially if you're doing something a little more advanced or intimidating like a self-portrait. If you're not used to drawing faces, a lot of people find drawing people to be a little bit harder um, because you are trying to capture the likeness, right? And unlike, you know, your still life with an apple, nobody, cares about the likeness of that particular apple, but with a face, you notice. <laughs> so yeah, I really recommend gridding off your paper. There's no shame in it. It's not cheating. It's really just a great way to practice and get started. And if your intention is something like developing your art style in your sketchbook, then I am on your page. No pun intended. <laughs> oh God. I do wanna let you know about a free workshop that I have called Sketchbooking Your Style. So it takes you through a plan for how to develop your art style by filling up your sketchbook. So if you're interested in that, check out the link in the description and sign up. It's a pretty cool workshop. I feel like you learn a lot, you know? When you open your sketchbook, you have a plan. You have a plan not just for a subject matter, but also for style development. If you found these tips helpful, make sure to like this video and subscribe. That'd be really cool. The majority of my viewers are not subscribed, so please subscribe and click the little bell so you don't miss any videos from me. All right, thanks so much for watching. Love you guys so much. Mwah.